Have you ever tried to blow a bubble and no matter what happens, you just can't? Why does this happen? Why do bubbles form at all? In this activity, we're gonna explore how bubbles form and we're gonna experiment with how big our bubbles can get. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another edition of Family STEM Saturdays with the Melrose Center Fab Lab. My name is Yesenia and today we're talking bubble science. But not just any bubbles, giant bubbles. Four foot long bubble strosities. I'm gonna show you how to make a bubble wand that won't be tangled like this. To make the bubble wand, you're gonna need a dowel rod. Now this was one rod that I actually cut into two pieces about a half an inch wide by 36 inches long. I also bought some screw eyes. It's better to use closed ones than open hook type. It's harder to control the twine if you use an open hook. You'll need some flat stainless steel washers. This helps you hold the shape of the string in place. So I don't know about you guys, but my hands cannot actually thread that screw eye through the dowel rod. So I used a drill with a little bit to make a little guide hole for me. And then once you've made that hole or if you decided to just go at it with your hands, you can just screw a little screw eye right into the dowel rod. It doesn't have to go all the way through. All you're looking for is to make sure that it's stable so that when you're using it, it doesn't come off. Uh, and then repeat for the other half of the dowel rod so that you have two pieces, two wands that you're gonna hold and thread this string through. So whatever thread you decide to use, you can use string, you can use twine or yarn, is what I'm using in here. Um, you can start with a three foot length um, is the minimum that I would say, but you can go as big as you want. I did a six foot length with the yarn just to see how it would change the bubble shape. Thread the stainless steel washer through the thread so that it's hanging out in the middle and you're gonna thread the both ends of your twine or yarn through both sides of your wands, right? So one end of the string through one end and same on the other. And then you just wanna tie a knot and make sure it's very secure. You don't want the string to come apart while you're in the middle of using it. So make sure you tie it real tight. From this point on, this activity might get a little messy. So you might wanna go outside to mix the bubble solution. The bubble solution recipe that I'm using is from Scientific American. Uh, it actually says that if you make a lot of it, because we are going to make a lot, it can stay overnight and it'll be better tomorrow. So you're going to start with eight cups of water. You can just get that from the tap. Half a cup of liquid soap. It doesn't have to be Dawn, even though that's what I'm using. But whatever you have at home, I'm sure will be fine. A mystery of the universe, baking powder for our bubble solution. But you're going to use a tablespoon of that and it fizzes up really cool. So check that out. And finally, a tablespoon of glycerin, which I purchased at Michael's. Mix that up all together and let's go out and blow some giant bubbles. It was a little windy uh, the day that we went out, but here's a great example of a giant bubble for you. I find that it's best to completely submerge the string or the twine in the solution, hold the wand closed, and then open it when you actually have it up in the air. You can walk backwards if there's not enough wind to push a bubble out. But how does the solution work? How is it forming bubbles? Water molecules like to cling to one another and will line up to form hydrogen bonds. Think of like magnets when you place magnets next to each other and they're slowly attracted. They form a lot of surface tension. So this surface tension allows the surface of the water to act like an elastic mem membrane. It'll stretch out to form different shapes. If you drop a small amount of water on wax paper, you'll see a great example of surface tension in action. When you drop the water, the water molecules don't splash, they are more attracted to each other than to the paper, allowing the drop to form a shape. Now the surface tension of water is so strong that we can't actually blow a bubble out of water. Try it, it won't work. So adding soap or detergent lowers that surface tension and create some space between the water molecules so that they can stretch out a little further and allows us to form bubbles. So to make bigger and stronger bubbles, we added glycerin and baking powder, although I'm not really sure why we added the baking powder. 
At a certain point though, bubbles get too big to hold themselves together. So they pop. Larger bubbles have larger surface area. That just means there's more room for external forces like gravity and air to exert pressure on the bubble to make it pop. So I hope you'll try this experiment at home. Let us know in the comments how big your bubbles got. Don't question the baking powder. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Family STEM Saturdays. <laughs>